Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. My name is Keelan. If Numbers Could Talk is a part of the Thinkering Group. You can find us over at thinkering.space. You can also find at Thinkering Space the Thinkering Talks podcast, the Exofathom podcast, along with the Plank Talks with Joe. When you get a chance, please check out our merchandise. We have merchandise on our website, thinkering.space, as well as merchandise at teespring.com slash thinkering shop. Please visit, grab a t-shirt, grab a mug. We'll appreciate it. And when you do, feel free to let us know that you've decided to become a member of any of our fan clubs. We really appreciate everyone who tunes in to any of our episodes, rather playbacks or lives on any of our channels. So we really just like when you guys get to reach out and let us know how you feel about the product, about each podcast, about upcoming podcasts. And we're just the type to interact. What can I say? Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. Today's episode is titled Marvelous 21. And I just want to open with saying the number 21 was big for me when I was coming up as a kid playing. Uh, it's a number that I like to play as uh, if I got the opportunity. Uh, I usually like to play as number 14, number 33, or number 21 if I got the option. Um, and the order of me asking for those jersey numbers was usually 21, 33, and 14. So this is one of those episodes that I get to cover two of the guys who brung a little spark to my interest in the game of basketball and the number 21 also like I, i'm not sure why either of them chose the number 21 um but i know both of them contribute to why i like the number 21 so much and both of these guys that i'm talking about today they're both hall of fame players highly notable players i'm pretty sure that most basketball fans if not every basketball fan knows about both of these guys and what they were able to accomplish and how far they went. The two gentlemen I'm talking about today are Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. So for all of those who are tuned in live, you'll see I have a new background today. Let me know how you like it. I'm trying something new out. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with it. But uh, again, I like feedback. I like to know um, how things are received. So let me know. So as I said again, today we're covering Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, two gentlemen who uh, they dominated, they uh, made a huge staple, they made sure their names were remembered, and they, the two of them, they ended at the top of the uh, position list, they ended at the top of uh, certain statistical categories, and in your hearts, if you are a true fan, both of these guys did their part to make sure that you remembered what their game was about if you watched their era, if nothing else. So Tim Duncan was drafted in 1997. He was the first round, first pick to the San Antonio Spurs. Kevin Garnett was drafted in 1995. He was the first round, fifth pick to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Tim Duncan was listed at six foot 11, 255 pounds. Kevin Garnett was listed at six foot 11, 240 pounds. Tim Duncan's nickname, and he had a few, um, but one of them was the Big Fundamental, or simply Timmy, for those who have seen South Park and who watched South Park growing up or who are just familiar with South Park today, you may know of a character named Timmy. That's how I like to say it, Tim. But um, if you watched Tim Duncan play, he was definitely the big fundamental. He probably is the main guy you would want to watch if you want to understand or if you want to know what fundamental basketball is. Um, and that's not just my opinion. That is by far the general consensus. I've never even heard anyone say that there was anything about Tim Duncan that was not fundamentally sound. Kevin Garnett's nickname was The Big Ticket, or KG, his initials. And 
I mean, the big ticket says enough. And if you, again, watch Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett came directly out of high school to the NBA, and he came in with a fire lit up under him. He was just a high-energy guy from the from day one. And um, actually, he's not the only one in this situation with an interesting beginning. So Kevin Garnett came straight out of high school, while Tim Duncan went to school in the Virgin Islands. And um, what I think is interesting about that is there. No, I've never really heard many people talk about uh, Tim Duncan and, you know, when he came up and or, or excuse me, when he grew up, not when he came up, but how he grew up. And the fact that Greg Popovich went apparently, apparently the story is that Greg Popovich went down there to talk to him, Tim Duncan, about start playing basketball and no longer swimming. And that is how he came to the NBA and it's the Tim Duncan we know today. But before that, he was going to be a swimmer. I think that's amazing. And then you think of his demeanor and the fact that he's called the big fundamental. And it's like, wow. So again, he's not, uh, Kevin Garnett's not the only one with an interesting story. Of course, you come straight out of high school, you know, he dominated across the nation in high school. He was just that guy. So, um, when we talk about these guys, we're not talking about your run of the mill players. These weren't your middle of the pack guys. Both of these guys were 1000% at the top of their game, pretty much from the moment they got there all the way to about the end. And we'll cover most, we'll cover that side of things later. Tim Duncan played 19 seasons in the NBA. Kevin Garnett played 21 seasons in the NBA. Tim Duncan played 1,392 games. Kevin Garnett played 1,462 games. Tim Duncan appeared in 18 playoffs and played a total of 251 playoff games. Kevin Garnett appeared in 14 NBA playoffs and played a total of 143 NBA playoff games. Tim Duncan won five championships, all with the Spurs. He never played for any team except the Spurs in his career. Kevin Garnett won one championship with the Boston Celtics. Kevin Garnett played for the Tim Minnesota Timberwolves, the Boston Celtics, and the Brooklyn Nets. After playing for the Brooklyn Nets for two seasons, he went back to finish his career for, I believe, another season, maybe two, with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Tim Duncan appeared in 15 All-Star games. Kevin Garnett also appeared in 15 All-Star games. Tim Duncan won two MVPs. Kevin Garnett was only able to amass or muster or collect, however you would like to call it. He was only able to gain one season MVP in his career. Fair enough. Tim Duncan had three. Again, Tim Duncan was able to attain three NBA Finals MVPs. Kevin Garnett, with his one championship, was not able to grab a Finals MVP. Tim Duncan was elected to the All-NBA First Team 10 times, whereas Kevin Garnett was elected to the All-NBA First Team only four times. That is not a slight it's just a reality. He only was able to get there four times. Now, as far as that's voting, that's just somebody saying, hey, he deserved to be the number one guy or excuse me, on the number one team as far as the best players in this league. However, as far as the all NBA teams all around, Tim Duncan was able to make 15 all NBA lists and Kevin Garnett made nine all NBA lists. Again, these are votes that doesn't really tell you, but well, it tells you a lot about how they played, but it tells you about how everyone else felt about how they played, how the fans, the other players, the media, a lot of things go into these votes. And of course, statistics. Tim Duncan was elected to the all defensive first team, the all defensive first team eight times, whereas Kevin Garnett was elected to the all defensive first team nine times. However, all defensive team selections altogether. Tim Duncan had 15 and Kevin Garnett was elected to a total of 12 all defensive NBA first. I mean, all defensive NBA teams altogether. Excuse me. 
Tim Duncan never had a defensive player of the year. Kevin Garnett has one defensive player of the year. Kevin Garnett was also the rebounding leader for the NBA on four separate occasions. Tim Duncan has zero rebounding leader season, rebounding leading seasons. Tim Duncan, however, won the rookie of the year, his rookie season. Kevin Garnett was not able to go home with the rookie of the year, his first season in the NBA. So as we get just to the bottom of accolades, and those are just the major accolades, we're not talking about all of the individual accolades that can come together when you are playing a professional sport. That is a very long list. It can get from players of the weeks to players of the month. Um, so these are only, you know, those awards that come at the end of everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we move on to stats per game, per game. Now keep in mind, Tim Duncan played 1,392, 1,392 season NBA games. Kevin Garnett played 1,462 season NBA games. And from that, we are going to tell, I'm going to tell you the averages they had through those 1,000 plus games. Tim Duncan averaged through seasons 19 points, 10.8 rebounds, three assists, 0.7 steals, and 2.2 blocks for 19 seasons out of Tim Duncan. Kevin Garnett, for his 21 seasons, Gave us 17.8 points, 10 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 1.3 steals, and 1.4 blocks for his 21 NBA seasons. So both of these guys for, let's call it at least 1,300 games each, averaged a double-double. 17.8 and 10, so let's round that to 18 and 10. 19 points and 10.8 rebounds. Let's round that to 11. So 19 and 11 for Tim Duncan, 17, excuse me, 18 and 10 for Kevin Garnett. That is amazing from, for 19 and 20 seasons. Let's average it, 20 seasons each, right? 20 season careers and that's your, how do people not talk about these guys a little more often? I understand when you look at the last few years, there's going to be some things that you say, oh, okay, well, Tim, Tim definitely ended his career a lot stronger, but both of these guys retired in 2016. Both of these, they retired at the exact same time, same year they called it quits. So understand that these guys battled each other continuously. They were always at each other's neck. They were always going to give you a great show. Now totals, the totals, right? Tim Duncan had a total of 26,496 points for his career. Kevin Garnett has a total of 26,071 points for his career. Tim Duncan grabbed a total of 15,091 rebounds. Kevin Garnett grabbed 14,662 rebounds. Tim Duncan had 4,225 assists to Kevin Garnett's 500 445 assists. These are power forwards. Steals out of power for Hall of Fame power forwards. Let's be clear. Hall of Fame, two Hall of Fame players. Kevin Garnett had or was able to collect 1,859 steals through his career, whereas Tim Duncan had 1,025 steals through his career. Tim Duncan also tossed, swatted, blocked 3,020 shots in his NBA career. 3,020 shots deflected and tossed away from the bucket by Tim Duncan through his career. Kevin Garnett has animated his animated blocks. Kevin Garnett's blocks would throw a ball into the third, fourth row just because. Not, not because he couldn't maybe, you know grab the ball just to put on a show, just to show you where your ball was going to end up when you tried to put a score on him. Kevin Garnett grabbed 2,037 blocks in his NBA career. 2,037 blocks in Kevin Garnett's Hall of Fame NBA career. Now, remember, these are two Hall of Famers, right? Kevin Garnett was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. 
the same year as Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame in the year 2020. That's right. They were both a part of the last class, last year's class for the Hall of Fame. They just made it in. But there was never a guess. There was never a secret. You never thought that either of these guys weren't going to be Hall of Famers by the time they made it where they made it to. And because of that, the voting, I'm sure, wasn't hard and the fans weren't even surprised. It was like, oh, man, good. Four years out for both of them. And they got straight in four years straight. First ballot Hall of Famers, no question. Now, let's talk about uh, for those who are aware, if you've tuned in, if you uh, or if you haven't, I'll make you very aware of what I do. I like to give the best season for each statistic as well for each player. So Tim Duncan's best points per game season was the year 2002, where he averaged 25.5 points. Kevin Garnett's best point per game season was the year 2004, where he averaged 24.2. Kevin Garnett's best rebounding season was 2004 as well, where he grabbed nine, excuse me, 13.9 rebounds. So in 2004, Kevin Garnett had 24.2 points and 13.9 rebounds. And those are his best two or she has his best year in both of those statistics, both of those categories. In the year 2003, Tim Duncan grabbed his highest average of 12.9 rebounds. In the same year of 2003, Tim Duncan had his career high or season high, the highest season he's ever been able to put up, of assists for 3.9 assists by Tim Duncan, a power forward. That is amazing. And if you know the guys he played with playing uh, on the San Antonio Spurs, your Manu Ginobili, your Bruce Bowen. I want to say big game Bob might have been back over there by then as well. Tony Parker, just guys who could catch and shoot. Um, and I mean, if you go look, you've had guys like uh, over time, you had guys like Matt Bonner, who some guys are like, oh, you know, he's not that great of a player. Well, maybe he's not in other systems, but in that system, he was a great player. Steals. Steals. Now, oh, I apologize. So I told you what Tim Duncan had in assist. His highest assist season was 3.9 assists in the year of 2003. Well, it was the exact same year of 2003 that Kevin Garnett had his highest assist season as well. And that was for six assists per game by a power forward named Kevin Garnett. In 1999, Tim Duncan had 0.9 steals per game. And in 1998, Kevin Garnett had 1.7 steals per game for both of their highest steal years. Back to 2003 for Tim Duncan. So in 2003, Tim Duncan averaged 2.9 blocks. 2.9, get that out of his, right? 2.9 of those things going the other way. Every game, every game. Kevin Garnett, Back to his year of 2004, which was clearly a great year for him, he had 2.2 blocks. 2.2. Get that out of here. These are amazing statistics to a guy like myself because you have to be aware. You have to be alert. The timing has to be perfect. Not nearly perfect. The timing has to be perfect to get blocks and steals and assists and points and rebounds these are not statistics that you just, oh, you know, I'm a ball player. So because that's what we get on the floor and we do, yeah, there's a lot of ball players that's made it to the NBA. And you can look at their statistical category after, say, like five, six years, still under 100 points, like total for their career. It happens. Doesn't mean that they're not good ball players. It means they don't fit into the system that they're in. My opinion. Now, let's move on to percentages, right? We've talked about, like, it. it if this were football and these were quarterbacks, I would tell you what their completion averages were. I'll tell you how many completions and how many attempts. Well, in basketball, we're not going to count how many shots a guy has shot over his entire career. I mean, that number is out there, but we can gauge it a little better by just stating the percentile. What was the percentages? No, 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 no. <laughs> so Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan averaged. From the field in his career, 
of 19 seasons, 1,392 games, 51% from the field, 18% from the three-point line, and 70% from the free throw line. Kevin Garnett averaged in his 21 seasons, 1,462 games, 50% from the field, 28% from the three-point line, and 79%, 79% from the free throw line for Kevin Garnett. These were efficient players. These guys were also usually the number one option. Um, I want to say, aside from maybe two or three years of Tim Duncan's career playing behind David Robinson or next to David Robinson, I don't think he ever played behind him. Um, He was always the first option. And with Kevin Garnett, I believe he was always the first option. Even in Boston, I believe he was the first option. So these guys had the ball in their hand plenty. They had a lot of opportunity to miss shots or make mistakes. They did not do that. Or they did not do that enough to where it affected the numbers and made it look like they weren't Hall of Famers because they're both Hall of Famers. But let's get to these playoffs. Big boy time. Game time. This is when every you show up. This is when the real players show up. I say it every time. I will continue to say it as long as the experts say it, as long as the players say it. I will agree with them because it shows on the floor. The game tape is there. Let's go watch it another time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you the numbers from that game tape that you can go look at. And then you can go over my numbers after you watch the game tape and say, hey, wait, he was right. He, that, that is exactly, I didn't have to get emotional about that. These guys are amazing. Look at them. Look at the numbers. Look at the game tape. Playoff time. Tim Duncan played a total of 18 playoff seasons for a total of 251 playoff games. Kevin Garnett played a total of 14 playoff seasons for a total of 143 playoff games. In those playoffs, Tim Duncan averaged through his playoff career, Tim Duncan's playoff career, 20 points, excuse me, 20.6 points, 11.4 rebounds, three assists, 0.7 steals, and 2.3 blocks in Tim Duncan's playoff career. Kevin Garnett's playoff career. In Kevin Garnett's playoff career, Kevin Garnett averaged 18.2 points, 10.7 rebounds, 3.3 assists, 1.2 steals, and 1.3 blocks. In Kevin Garnett's playoff career, playoff careers, those are Crazy numbers for playoffs. These guys were still averaging double doubles in the playoffs, the same way they were in the season. So for their careers, playoffs and season, both of these gentlemen averaged double doubles. Double, double. So let's go. Totals. What did they get all together? Right. What was the amount they were able to finish with when all of the numbers were tallied up? Well, let me give you Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett in his playoff career of 14 playoff appearances in 143 playoff games had 2,601 points, 1,534 rebounds, 471 assists, 178 steals, and 186 blocks. Tim Duncan, in his 18 playoff seasons, for a total of 251 playoff games, had 5,172 points, 2,859 rebounds, 764 assists, 168 steals, with 568 playoff blocks for Tim Duncan in his playoff career. Jump on in the comments. Go ahead and drop me an email over if if numbers could talk at gmail.com. Let me know if you don't think those were amazing numbers I just just gave to you. I don't mind having that discussion. 
by the way, if you don't think those were interesting numbers, give me some people you like for me to look up and give you those numbers that were more interesting. No worries. So from there, we have percentages. And I appreciate every last one of you guys. <laughs> so from there, we have percentages. The percentages for Tim Duncan's playoff career. From the field, Tim Duncan shot 50%. From the three-point line, Tim Duncan shot 14% in his playoff career. And from the free throw line, Tim Duncan shot 70, oh, excuse me, 69%. 69% from the free throw line for Tim Duncan in his playoff career. Kevin Garnett had a total of, percentage-wise, 48% from the field in his playoff career. 27% from the three-point line in his playoff career. And 79% from the free throw line for a big man named Kevin Garnett for his playoff career. Now, again, I ask you, I beckon the call. Please let me know if you do not think that these guys came to do work. So the next thing we have here is the best playoff seasons for these gentlemen per statistical category. It was in 2002 that Tim Duncan averaged, or excuse me, had a high of 27.6 points per playoff game. It was in 2003 that Kevin Garnett had 27 points per playoff game. In 2003, Tim Duncan had 15.4 rebounds per playoff game, whereas it was 2002 where Kevin Garnett had 18.7 rebounds per playoff game. Assist. Well, in 2003, again, Tim Duncan also had 5.3 assists per game. 5.3 assists per game. Oh, I'm sorry, per playoff game. Whereas it was 2000, the year 2000, where Kevin Garnett had 8.8 .8 assists per playoff game. Kevin Garnett in 2015 had 1.3 steals per playoff game. That is the season before he retired. His second to last season, he had the most steals in a playoff series, or in a playoff season, excuse me. And it was in 2011 that Kevin Garnett had 1.9 steals per playoff game. And then we go back to 2002, the same year that Tim Duncan had his best scoring playoff season. He also had his best block playoff season. It was 2002 where Tim Duncan averaged 4.3 blocks per game. And in 1998, Kevin Garnett had 2.4 2.4, 2.4 blocks per game. I just think that you can't not get a little excited so much. So as you guys see, I can't help but repeat some of these numbers. I get a little excited. Like I, I really enjoy this. I really love looking at the body of work on paper without the influence of the eye test. Sometimes the eye test is what gets us into our emotions. The eye test, you know, you see a guy do a windmill, you see a guy dunk on someone, uh, or you see Kevin Garnett barking somebody down and then they miss five shots. That's going to win you over a little bit, right? But with these numbers, you don't have to see Kevin Garnett bark somebody down. In fact, if you were to see Kevin and Garnett and Tim Duncan play, when you go back and look at those highlights, or you even if you find those full games, say on YouTube maybe, what you won't see is Kevin Garnett able to bark Tim Duncan down. In fact, he talks about it himself. Go ahead and look it up. So what I have chose to do with this particular episode, this particular episode, I also want to add, I was, I, 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 I usually try to find uh, how many games the gentlemen played against one another. Um, those statistics were a little they, they didn't kind of add up. I'll, I'll say that. So I didn't include them. 
I will continue to look for them. And if I find them, maybe I'll do a follow up and just add that to this episode. But the way I'm going to end today's episode, um, I want to let everyone understand really what the concepts that we're we're moving forward with as far as uh, the breakdown. Right. Our breakdown is solely, solely, solely to inform solely to give us something else to debate about. We're all in those forums. We all, you know, we talk with our friends and stuff about sports and we know how that goes. You know, you, you might even start sweating a little bit. You get so irritated if someone says something you don't like. Um, and the purpose here is to just add more fuel. You know, we already have the emotions behind it. We already know how we feel. But once we uh, are able to pick up some of these numbers and then put that behind our argument, <laughs> Don't you like to win an argument? I know I do. Or a discussion. I'm sorry, a discussion, a debate of sorts. I'm sure you like to win yours because I love to win mine. And that is really the whole purpose here. We just, we enjoy going over facts and we enjoy lending facts and bringing facts and opinion together to, uh, you know, bring power to words, bring power to information. And that is the purpose. So, for those who are watching live and for those who uh, continue to tune in with us, if you're tuning in on the Thinkering page over on Facebook, tune in around eight o'clock tonight. We have another uh, show coming on today, which will be our the ExoFathom podcast will be coming on. And if you've never tuned into the ExoFathom, tonight is your night to get a double header. You get if numbers could talk right now and then you'll be followed up with the ExoFathom podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate everyone. I really, really enjoy this. And I am glad that you guys are here with me every time I come in. And I appreciate those who listen to the playbacks as well and watch the playbacks. Take care of yourself. Take care of those you love. And I'll see you guys next week. Later, guys.